I've never been totally in love with the looks of the Subaru BRZ Coupe sports car, also sold as a Toyota 86. It's not ugly, it's just the back looks a little bit cumbersome, the brake lights extrude a bit, a bit goggle-eyed. But then we went to pick up a Toyota 86 to have a test drive, and it was in white and it totally changed my perception. You see, I think style is not just a question of what you know now and learn, it's a reflection on your past. What I saw was a memory of the early British sports cars, the Austin Healey Sprite, for example, which were simple in design and simple in colours. Now, you can point the finger immediately and say, talking about goggle-eyed lights, one would only have to mention the Austin Healey bug-eyed Sprite. But the point is, it reminded me when I was young and when I had the simple view of motoring. And I think the BRZ and the, the 86 look much better in a simpler colour, which shows them as a simple, free-flowing vehicle. The Subaru BRZ slash Toyota 86 has had a bit of an upgrade. This rear-wheel drive sports car is better for the makeover and improves on its already impressive value-for-money proposition. The Toyota GT is a cheaper entry-level vehicle than the lowest-priced Subaru. It is priced at $30,790, but the main compromise with this is a rather simple low-grade dashboard and entertainment control system. The top-spec Toyota 86 is called the GTS and is priced at $36,500. If you can find the money and want to stay with Toyota, I would recommend the GTS, which accounts for some two-thirds of the 86 sales figures. The Subaru has two models, with the standard model being just under $33,000 and the premium model being $34,500. They all come with Subaru's 2.0-litre Boxster engine, with two slight variations. For the six-speed manual, it produces 152 kilowatts at 7,000 revs and 212 newton metres of torque. The six-speed automatic has slightly less performance figures of 147 kilowatts and 205 newton metres of torque. In both cases, the maximum torque is not achieved till a very high 6,400 revs per minute. These figures are not enormous, so it means it is a sort of sports car that you have to work with to get the most out of it. Drivers from every market in which the car is sold have pleaded for it to come with a turbocharged WRX engine. Subaru has said no, no, no. It does not suit where they want the car to be in the market. Definitely not. Never. Some take that as a maybe. The engine runs on 98 high-octane fuel and Toyota says the fuel consumption is excellent. I wouldn't quite use that word. It is much higher for the manual at 8.4 litres per 100 kilometres than for the automatic at 7.1 litres per 100 k. The main reason for the thirsty nature of the manual version is not the few extra kilowatts of power, but rather that it has a lower final drive gear ratio. When driving the manual, we saw 3,000 revs per minute at 110 kilometres an hour in top gear. With a curb weight of 1,239 kilograms, it's about 230 kilograms heavier than the Mazda MX-5. Consequently, it's not as nippy as the Mazda, but it does handle very well. Not in the aggressive, razor-sharp turn-in that you might get from some hot hatches, such as the Ford Focus ST, for example. It turns in very well by giving that feeling of flowing through the corners rather than jumping onto the corner as though two hands are stretched out to grab the apex. I don't think that's a disadvantage, and in some ways I find it far less tiring. The car drives very easily around the city, although there's one thing about the speedo. It goes up to 260 kilometres an hour in equal gradations. This means that for usable, read legal, speeds, the dial doesn't move a great deal and it doesn't give a very clearly defined speed at which you are travelling. The speedo is in fact not in the centre of the dashboard, which is taken up by a taco, 
which you would expect and enjoy, particularly in the manual. I like a digital speedo, and the 86 has one on the right-hand side of the taco in a smallish window which looks a bit like the date number on a watch. You sit low in the car, and the low roofline gives the vehicle a much wider look, particularly when compared to something like a little Suzuki. When you're driving in traffic, you are conscious of the fact that you are in a low-slung sports car, especially next to heavy vehicles. Driven media technical expert Errol Smith and I settled into the car and took it for a bit of a drive. What's your first impression when you get into the car? It's low. Low? It's not too bad because the waistline's not too high. Mm. Once you're in it, you're, you're okay. Mm. The Stinger I was in the other day has a very high waistline. It makes you feel as though you are sitting very low. I felt the steering wheel very close to the dashboard reminded me of older cars. I know it's adjustable. Yeah. Yeah. I know I can I do that, but I, the other thing you point out about the steering wheel is incredibly simplistic because there's no buttons on it. Yeah. Yeah. No buttons on there's it at no, all. There's no steering wheel controls at all. You've got a there's a stalk for the uh, for the cruise, cruise control, control but yep. um, yeah no audio controls. The audio is strictly uh, touch screen on this unit here. Now, they say in a lot of advertising dealers and that, that come and get the RAW, R-A-W, mm. RAW experience, not R-O-A-R. Yes. Although it's got a nice note, note to it, we'll test that in a moment. Mm. But RAW, well, it's very simplistic, isn't it? Mm. It's nice to drive a manual again. Errol? Yeah, Although I might not do it well. <laughs> <laughs> We will now kangaroo hop up the road. Yes. It's nice that they've uh, they put a reversing camera in as, as standard equipment. But this is just entertainment. Yes. Uh, we're in a sports car, but it is all or nothing. Well, it's, it's only all. There's no comfort mode, there's no economic mode, there's yeah. no electronics to the actual handling of the car. Yes, the only, the only things we have are, we have a traction control disable button, and then we have a track mode button. Yeah, David, this is not a vehicle you would want to be driving to work in peak hour traffic. Some people still love the manual. Yes. To me, I think it's horses for courses. I don't want to be driving the commute with yeah. a manual anymore. Yeah. I've got a cousin that will still do it, you know, loves to do it, feels part of the car. Mm. I feel just tired. Yes. <laughs> Could just be a maturity thing, I think, David. <laughs> maturity. That's a nice word rather than yes. getting old. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you've got a, a fairly short travel on the clutch. Um, and Most yeah. things are minimalist movement, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the gear shift is the same. Yeah. It is a very short little throw to it. Uh, I remember getting in an MX-5 and feeling the same thing. Yeah, this, this actually reminds me quite a lot of the MX-5 in terms mm. of its of its feel and it's it's got that, that short throw gearbox and it's very uh, limited in the creature comforts. Oh yeah. There's no automatic lights or uh, windscreen uh, wipers or safety, you know, active safety gear. There's none of that. It's very it's very basic and you know it's all about the, the driving of the car. It's not about the the you know, technology, the feature, yeah, yeah. the feature list. It's got seven airbags and things. I think it's, you know, does rather well. We got the young fella in the back, but he wouldn't want to go very far with it. Oh, I should have gone down there, shouldn't I? Some of the options you can get with a car include bigger wheels, lower springs, a sway bar, an interior panel which tries to make the inside look reasonable, and interior illumination but I don't really want to look at my feet. The Toyota 86 and its sibling, the Subaru BRZ, are maintaining a tradition of neat and affordable sports cars with acceptable power if you are prepared to work with the car, not just push the accelerator.